As ridiculous as it seems, I'm going to fix some kitchen tongs. It's not viable. You could probably buy the same one or similar ones from a thrift store for under a dollar. They're probably not much dearer than you. But being the ultimate recycler, these are a favorite of a family member. I said, let's have a go at fixing them. And I thought, why not video it? Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. A lot of my repairs are not viable, but it's all about showing you that not everything has to be thrown out and fixing things doesn't always come back to um, dollars for your time. If it's satisfying, it can be a hobby and you're doing a little bit for the planet to keep things in circulation. Let's have a look at these tongs and I'll show you what's wrong and we'll see if we can sort the problem out. Now these are Ben's favourite tongs and he tells me that they're hard to get with the flat spade thing on the base. He hasn't been able to replace them. And what's happened is that the rivet at the end has actually pulled through one side and you can see there's a hole there. I've actually chopped the end off because I started doing this repair before I uh, decided to film it. So there's the little bit that I chopped off. It's a little aluminium rivet. It's just riveted over both ends and there's a fairly heavy duty spring on the inside so that you can get the the tong part to work properly. Now it still actually works at the moment, but because the rivet doesn't go through this side, it kinks to one side and clearly it's not going to last very long. So let's pull that aluminium rivet out first and we'll look at options for fixing it. Okay, I have bent this little retainer so we can get that off. That'll be easily easy to reinstall. The rivet needs to come out from the stainless steel. Uh, I have just poked it back in there to show you what it was like before we started. I can't actually get the tongs on that. And we also need to get the spring out from inside. Because the rivet is a bit shorter than what it was, I might be able to just lever that out. But how I got it out originally was I just rested it on a on the end of a small socket and just punched the rivet through because one end is quite small and it had slipped inside one side anyway. Let's see if we can get that spring out without throwing it across the room. Okay, we can push the rivet through a bit more. We should actually be able to grab that now and pull it right through. And there the tongs are now going to come completely apart. It's a fairly powerful little spring and we'll have to restrain that to put it back in. Uh, we'll just straighten these pieces up. They're a little bit bent out of shape and they just need to fit snugly inside the other side. And we have to look at options for fixing it. Well, they had used an aluminium rivet, which is a bit chewed up now, uh, and it's clearly too short. We could um, we could probably put a screw through there with a nut on the other side. However, the problem there is as you tighten it up, it's going to squash the pieces together and it may not pivot properly. The other problem was unless we use a stainless steel screw or a brass screw, it's going to rust because these end up in the dishwasher. They are used in the kitchen, which is, you know, usually they're getting wet and we don't want it to go rusty. So I think aluminium is probably the easiest if we're going to re-rivet it. We could also use a little screw and a nut on each side, but again, we'd need to be stainless steel. And the problem is if you tighten it up so that it doesn't come loose all the time, if you have one each side, you're actually not going to be able to pivot the tongs at all. The other way is to put a bush right through. So we could probably drill the hole out a bit on each side and put a bush right through and then put a longer bolt through on the outside but again it's going to need to be stainless steel and we're certainly not going to have those floating around the right size so i'm looking for a piece of aluminium you could use an aluminium uh, rivet if you have any possibly even a copper rivet uh, obviously it needs to be soft if you're going to use it as a rivet because you have to uh, flatten the ends over on both sides and i have a bit of an idea of doing that but what i did find was some solid aluminium wire. Now, I'm not sure where I got this from. It was in my aluminium scrap bin, but it's pretty much exactly the right diameter as to the rivet. rivet. So I've cut a piece of that off and it fits through the hole quite nicely. And out the other side, once we line it up, there we go. And so the tongs pivot quite nicely. There's not excessive movement and we do need to have the shaft going right through for the spring to locate on. And that's the other trouble if you just try and put a little nut and a washer on each side. Sorry, a little nut and a, a bolt on each side. You do need to have a shaft go right through for the spring to locate. So this piece of aluminium will work fine. Aluminium won't rust, so it should be fine in the kitchen. 
And all we need then to do is to have a way to rivet it over on the end so that it can't slip through the hole. Our next dilemma with riveting this piece of aluminium is when you normally rivet, you would use a ball peen hammer and you would rest it on an anvil or something and you would progressively hit round around the edge of the item to be riveted and it gradually flares it out and and tightens it up against whatever you're restraining. The trouble is here that our aluminium shaft goes through the middle there and there's nothing to stop it bending. Now, most rivets... Uh, whether they be steel, copper, or aluminium, if they're through, if they're encased in something, they go through a hole the same or similar size as what the rivet is. They they are held; they can't bend, and you can easily just peen the end over. However, this one, being soft aluminium, is actually going to bend. It's not going to work. So, what I thought I might do is make a rivet spinner, which, if you've ever joined a chainsaw chain, and I know most of you never would have, but they use steel rivets, and you clamp it up in a special riveter and you put pressure on that end of the rivet and at the same time you turn and what it does is it rounds the metal over and gradually flares it out without putting enormous shock pressure straight through. So I'm going to try and do something on my pedestal drill. I've made up a, well I've almost made up, I've made up something I think might work. I'm using the back of an old uh, large drill bit. It's got a really heavy shank on it. And it had a small hole in the end. And so what I've done is I've I've drilled it a little bit deeper and slightly wider, around about the similar width to how I want the rivet head to be. And then I've filed a bit of a, well, I actually used a hacksaw blade and cut a little bit of a V across it. It's pretty hard metal, but it's probably not as hard this end as what the actual drill bit is. So it was soft enough for me to remove some material there and create the sort of shape I want. But it will be hard enough to rivet over aluminium. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut that shank, shank off just with my angle grinder and we'll be able to fit this piece into my drill press. Okay, I have a pedestal drill up on my bench. You'll notice that it's very rusty. It has not been used for a long, long time. I probably got it out of someone's shed when I cleaned up years ago and it sat in my shed behind my shop for many years not being used. In fact, it got buried with stuff because I was storing stuff in that shed. Um, but I just turned it on. It actually does work. It doesn't work well, but it works. And it will do the job here. And I'm planning to upgrade my pedestal drill shortly. And in fact, I have an exciting deal coming up that I'll let you know in the near future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... We haven't put the spring in yet. I'm going to clamp the tail of this aluminium wire into the vise so that it holds it steady and it doesn't matter if it squashes it a bit and then I'm going to fit the piece I made into the chuck and we'll put some downwards pressure on the drill as it's spinning well, we've lost our focus as it's spinning and then hopefully this um, setup on the bottom here will spin the uh, aluminium into a bit of a rivet and hopefully make a neat job of it Okay, we've got a bit of a close-up. Let's see if this works. I have not actually done this before. I'm just going to put a little bit of machine oil just on the top, just to help the rivet spinner sort of slip and yet apply a fair bit of pressure. Let's turn the drill on. Okay, what's going on there? I think it's flaring out. I may have drilled the hole a little bit deep because it's like it shaved the edge off and now made a cone. I actually want it probably flat so that it can press and, and wipe it out widthways. So I might have to adjust that, although it has flared it out a little bit. Perhaps we can just go a little bit further and then just finish it off with a hammer just to tap it flat. It seems like it's gone, it's made it wide enough that the tongs can't slip up past it. They can slip to it, but not past it. Yeah, I suspect the hole's a little bit deep in the uh, in the bit that I've made. Okay, take two, I've modified this piece. I 
cut it back stay focused please i cut it back and uh got rid of the large deep hole and there was a tiny little hole in the middle which i've enlarged with a huge drill bit uh, just to sort of chamfer out a little uh, uh, concave section there i haven't done any grooves across it we'll just see how that smooths the aluminium down and if i can get enough pressure on it it should round it down nicely okay let's give it another go Now it appears to be peeling the aluminium off a bit. Let's put a little bit more oil on that so that it doesn't sort of bite too much. The drill bit did leave a, leave a fairly rough area in the end of this tool, so uh, the oil might help smooth it out. I think that's done a pretty good job. I had a couple of washers underneath just to give it uh, a firm area to rest on right around. Let's have a look at that. Okay, well it certainly spun it and it certainly flared it out. Can we push the, yeah, there we go. So it's made, it's a little bit jagged, but we'll just clean it up. But it's it's made quite a nice mushroom top on there. I think it will work perfectly fine. So all we need to do is now take this rivet out, um, put the spring in and cut it to length and do the same on this side. Okay, I've just cut our rivet to length and that head actually looks quite good. So it's working fine. It's probably a little bit coarse on the tool because it was a bit jagged inside from the drill bit I used. If I polished it out a bit smoother, it would probably leave a smoother rivet head. But that's working perfectly fine. I reckon that's going to be stronger than the original one. So we just need to get this spring back in here. And to do this, I've just got a little loop of metal. It's actually a stainless steel, like a cable tie that I've pulled right in as tight as I can get it. And that will hold our spring as such, which is much easier to then fit between these tong handles than trying to compress it as you're fitting it in. So we'll get that in the right spot, slip that in there, and we can poke the rivet through once we get it all lined up. It's through the spring now, we just need to find the other side hole. There we go, we should have enough to rivet over there, and I can take this off the spring now. So our tongs are feeling beautiful, we just got to finish that rivet off. Okay, I've closed the vise up now because we don't have anything to clamp and we're going to sit the head of our rivet here. There's a little indentation here where someone's accidentally drilled part of the old vise away. It's going to be a perfect landing spot for the head of that rivet. So we'll line that up with our drill press. I think that's about it. And we'll finish the riveting. We will give it some oil. Okay, all finished. It's come up really well, actually. It's a little rough, and I think if I was going to do more than one of these, well, that side's come up well. The, the tool I made is a little rough in the end, and so it tended to chew the aluminium because the aluminium's so soft. But I did keep applying oil, and when it was oiled, it actually worked so much better. When it got dry and got hot, it started to chip the aluminium away. But that's flared out both sides beautifully, and I would hazard a guess to say that that's a stronger rivet than what was originally on these tongs. Uh, it doesn't appear to be any slop in the jaws at all. It's squashed up more than enough. I could give it a little tap with a hammer if I wanted to just to flatten each end, but I don't think it's necessary. It's not sharp and I don't want to risk bending the rivet in the middle. And you can see by spinning it this way, we don't bend the shaft at all. So there we go. Tongs finished, Ben. Awesome. Oh, all I need to do is put this little clip back on just so that you can hold them closed and uh, we can return them for more use on the barbecue or wherever they get used. There we go guys, tongs all back together, working perfectly. 
they will survive many more Australian barbecues. Um, ben, if I was to charge this out for labour, you'd buy a lot of tongs for the same amount. But it's not about that. It's about keeping something that's a favourite in circulation. Uh, they could have gone in the scrap bin, but they didn't. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.